Good morning. Welcome to Erin's Tasty Heritage. Today we are cooking with Kevin. <laughs> that was weird. Hello, everyone. Remember, I told you that I was a tween mom. Enter tween. <laughs> okay, today he has requested that we make um, Guy Fieri's macaroni and cheese bacon cheeseburger. And when do you eat this? When we go to Missouri. When, you, when we go to Branson. We always go to Guy Fieri's. That is one of our favorite um, restaurants in Branson. And, and of all time. And of all time. We love um, watching diners, drive-ins, and dives. And that is something that we do when we go on vacation. We always make sure and see if there is a um, Triple D um, restaurant around and we try to frequent if we can. So when we go to Branson, we always go. <laughs> um, and each time we have gone, Maddie has bought a cookbook. And so she showed Gavin the cookbook when I gave them the assignment of um, requesting or planning one menu item for this week for dinner. And so since we are doing the pantry challenge, do we have buns in the house? No. So we've got to make them. Super fun. All right, so we are going to start with three quarters of a cup of um, start, sourdough starter. Okay, we're gonna start with um, three fourths cups of sourdough starter. My um, sourdough starter is an einkorn um, sourdough starter. We are going to use several different flours with today's um, sourdough hamburger bun, but I want you to see how bubbly it's perfect. It's ready to, to do its job. Can you hand me a spatula out of the drawer, please? So when I'm getting the sourdough out of the... No. The spatula. <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's a spatula. The, the white one. What white one? The rubber. Pull it up. Put the first drawer. The first drawer. Yes, oh, there you go. That's a spatula. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to put three-fourths cup of the starter. We couldn't find three-fourths, so we're having to kind of estimate. Well, I made um, sandwich bread last night, and it's in the dishwasher, or in the sink to be put to the dishwasher. Okay, so... We've got that yummy goodness going. I'm going to put that up. And if you, actually, I'm just going to set it to the side right there. Okay. So then we're going to do three-fourths a cup of water. And Gavin is helping me in the, and then I take my spatula and I just, it to get that starter um, and water incorporated. Do we need more water? No. Okay. Then we're going to do, I'm looking at my recipe. Then we're going to do four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And that is bubbling up really nice. It, this is very active starter. I'm gonna do this, but. I have a question for everyone. Who watched the Cowboys and Commanders game on Sunday? <laughs> that was not a good game. Oh, God. Also, thoughts and prayers for DeMar Hamlin and his family. That was very sad. Yes. We are. We are praying for them, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you're gonna do one tablespoon, one good heaping tablespoon of honey. Filling. And since I used my measuring spoon um, or my tablespoon to do the olive oil first, the honey is just pouring right out. Okay, 
Then we need to put in one egg. Can you get me an egg from the refrigerator? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting this going. I forgot about the egg. So if you do not have an egg, you can use two tablespoons of um, dry um, milk powder if you don't have an egg. If you do have an egg, though, I like using the egg better than the milk powder. That's a beautiful trend. Although I have never gotten the, um, I have never gotten the King Arthur, and I have heard great things about their dry milk. I will say that normally, if I were thinking, I would have um, let that egg and be room temperature instead of putting it straight in from the refrigerator, but I, it'll be okay. That's okay. I just think it does better, and you don't shock your starter with the cold egg. Okay, now what are, what's next? Uh, Two-fourths cups of flour. Use the, this one. Okay. So we're going to get our flour. Yes. So we're going to get our flour. Beautiful flour. So two and a quarter cups of all purpose flour. And then you're going to use a quarter cup of rye flour. What's that? It's a type of wheat. Here. And then we're going to use a quarter cup of spelt. Um, I just started using the spelt flour and I love it. Um, it is a great, I, I love the texture that it puts in bread, and I've actually never used it with this. I usually use um, whole wheat, but I wanted to try the spelt with this recipe. Okay, let's see here. And then we're going to do two tablespoons of ground flax seed. like a powder. Um, if you have just flax seeds, I'm sure you could ground those if you, I've never done that, but I don't know why you couldn't. Okay, two tablespoons of those, and then one and a half teaspoons of salt. Okay, one and a half teaspoons of salt. And then one nope, that's one teaspoon, so then you're gonna go to the half. We love our salt guys. Good job. Now put those back in the drawer. Okay, so then we're gonna start the kneading process. I'm gonna put it just on stir to get it to um, get tacky, and then I'll put it on to to start kneading. And you're gonna knead it for about eight to ten minutes in the um, hand mixer. It takes a little bit of time, but I feel like you don't want to rush your bread. Now, um, while we're waiting on this, I um, got, I'm going to show you this Broad and Taylor um, so that I could um, proof my bread in it, and it has become a lifesaver. Our house, um, we keep our house a little colder, and so it's just very hard to rise bread in the right amount of time. And so um, when I got this, it changed my bread making. So I, if you have a colder home um, and can do a, a bread proofer, I totally recommend it. Now you can also use your oven as that, but I will, I just, I never, I wasn't getting the results that I wanted. And so that's why I went ahead and, 
and got this purchase and I I absolutely love it. Not sponsored, just I love the I love it. And it has some other things that you can do with it too that I haven't tried and I need to. Okay, so that you can see that is getting tacky. So now I'm gonna put it on two. And we're just gonna let it do its thing. We'll be back. We are back. Okay, so it started sticking to the bottom of the um, bowl, and so I added just about two tablespoons of flour. Uh, that's the other thing with bread making. You're, it just depends. You don't, you're not real sure about the moisture level until you start working with the dough, and so um, that helped it get going again. You're back. <laughs> Okay, I can tell that it is almost ready. So I went ahead and put just a tiny bit of olive oil in the bowl and I'm just going to just get it around the bowl just to help. I'm not putting very much, just a tiny bit. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. And um, the dough is not sticky. Um, Which is a good thing. And if you do the pull test, it doesn't fall apart on you. Like it doesn't do that. <laughs> I've I dropped it, but and then it's almost like you can see the window pane. You can see through it. Okay, so then we're gonna put it in there. And we're going to put, um, get me the saran wrap. Uh, I'm gonna put saran wrap over it and then we'll put it in our bread proofer for four hours. The bottom one. So for four hours and then we'll come back and show you. Um, this has two rises so it takes eight hours. Um, that's why we're starting early this morning, but we will be back. Okay. All right, y'all. So Maddie just got home from school. She was telling me she had to, we went to the dentist today and I have, um, macaroni. So Gavin has just let me know that he picked the menu. He was not going to be cooking it. So apparently the fun that we have had in the kitchen today, cooking, um, Hamburger buns has <laughs> tired him out, but I'm going to get him back in here when we cook hamburgers. But anyway, so the macaroni and cheese part of this, I'm sure Guy Fietti makes homemade macaroni and cheese, but we're going to do the box cheese and then I'm going to um, put uh, shredded cheese on the top of it and put it in the oven to make it, give it a little bit more firmness so that when we put it on the um, hamburger, it, it won't be so falling off um, the bun. So when we get come back to cooking the hamburgers, I will bring Mr. Gavin back with me. Okay, so I'm trying, I've got to figure this out. I have... I was gonna do um, fried potatoes, but then I remembered that I, I got these from Azure. I have three bags of these. And so I thought they would be fun with the hamburger because 
um, Guy Fieri puts onion rings on his, and my kids do not do onion rings, so I thought it would be fun to have these on the side, and if they want to put them on their hamburger, then they can. Um, and so I have a good amount of um, avocado oil, and um, it's got some tallow in it as well, and I'm going to just fry these up in batches, um, and it, they're like little chips. So um, I'm gonna start that process and get that going, and then um, we are getting ready to make hamburger patties. Super, super excited about this meal. This is gonna be fun. We've never actually done um, this kind of a hamburger before. The uh, macaroni and cheese that is in the cookbook has gouda and cheddar and a cup. Uh, Fontina has a couple of other cheeses, so I'm actually going to grate some of those cheeses that I have in my refrigerator and then bake them on top of this macaron this box macaroni that we're going to make delicious to put on top of a cheeseburger. I've got the bacon in the oven, so we are cooking with grease. <laughs> okay, I want to show you real quick this uh, macaroni and cheese. I um, did follow the directions of the box, except I did not use milk because we are out of milk. And I um, go on Thursday to pick up my dairy order, so we're just gonna, we just did butter and water. Um, and it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, um, I didn't make it as creamy as I would if I were doing this as a side. And then his recipe called for um, three tablespoons of mustard. This is not the equivalent of um, noodles that are in his, so I just did a teaspoon of yellow mustard in there. And then it also calls for pepper, so I'm gonna put just a little bit of pepper in there, okay? Then I'm going to, just in a little casserole dish, I'm going to put half of that down and then I've got some cheese grated here. The Gouda was kind of, I did have Gouda and it was our smoked Gouda. It was a little bit hard to grate, so I'm just gonna kinda do that. And then I had um, sharp cheddar and the Azure raw um, cheddar. And to us, it has more of a Fontina flavor, so I use that. So I'm just putting a good layer of cheese there and then I'm going to top the rest of the macaroni on top of that and then I'm gonna put more cheese. So this should give us a good layer for our hamburger. Um, and make it sticky. Then I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven, um, probably for 30 minutes while we're letting the hamburgers cook and just let it all melt together and get bubbly and, and ooey gooey deliciousness. Then I'm gonna bring you back over here. I've got the chips. Excuse my microwave, but I have the chips and they are frying up nicely. Um, I'm just letting them get to a golden, to a golden um, chip color, <laughs> homemade chip color. And then um, bacon's still in the oven and we are almost ready. Are you sure that's a good combo? Yes, Hello, it's dear. <laughs> I'm tired. Gavin's tired, but we're gonna make this cheeseburger. Okay, so we've got a pound of, <laughs> uh, we have a pound of longhorn ground beef and a pound of deer that Sir Gavin provided for us. She has to say it weird. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna put in two, it's about cooking. Okay, two teaspoons of salt, and I'm watching the chips. 
So are they chips or are they fries? Well, they're fries. potatoes that were cut into chips. They're like homemade chips. Ow. Yeah. They're gonna be yummy. Okay, did you put two teaspoons? Yes. Okay, so now you're gonna do um, two teaspoons of garlic. Fun. Two teaspoons of garlic. And pepper's already out. Oh, it's already getting in my nose. The garlic. Yep. <laughs> okay, one teaspoon of pepper. No, 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 no. Level it out. Not a heaping teaspoon, just a... Yeah, there you go. Put that in there. Okay, now I'm going to put this up for you. Now you're going to... Did you wash your hands before you came in here? Yes. Okay. Will you, um, I should have asked you that. I already know. I've been cooking with you for however long I've been able to move my hands. <laughs> so, I think I know when and when not to wash my hands. Except you don't know what a spatula is. I do. Too. Actually. No, that was a spatula. <laughs> Comment down below if you think the one that I grabbed was a real spatula. It was. I showed his sister Maddie and she was laughing. She goes, Well, he grabbed the wrong one. Is that the wrong one? This is <laughs> they need to have they need to have different types of spatulas. They need to have I a guess, burger spatula and a pad spatula. I guess some people call that a scraper, that one that I used. I don't know. I'm not a cook pro. <laughs> I'm a normal human being who cooks for fun. Okay. So now that we've got this done, we need to get our cast iron heated up. Um, go ahead and grab a cookie sheet so you can get the patties made while I'm getting the cast iron done. Is this a cookie sheet? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's that'll be perfect. I'm too short, guys. I can't. I can barely reach the thing. Don't laugh at me in the comments. Okay, I make my burger. I make my patties? Yes, start making. Remember it See said fork. Remember it said to divide it into four. Into four. Um, I think we could probably make them five because of Did you show them your um your hamburger buns? I think they can see them. Well, I showed them when they came in. Okay, look about that big and then you're going to flatten them. Okay? Okay. okay. I showed them when I started how beautiful they were. You need a good chunk of meat. Very good chunk. Oh, that's not. Is that too much? It wasn't mixed well. <laughs> that's too small to eat. Why are you laughing? What's so funny? I'm so confused. So. Gavin has, um, he loves to talk in different accents. Wisconsin, Indian, British, you name it, I can do it. <laughs> and he always tries to get me to say water a certain way. And water. I, I and never... she goes, water. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, we crack up all the time in case you didn't know it. <laughs> In case you didn't notice, we love to laugh. <laughs> what case did you didn't know? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Which one had 10K in it? I'm curious. Okay, are you getting those? Patties. Let's see here, what do you got? Well, you're gonna make two out of that one, I guess. You. Oh, that has some, hold on. That has frozen meat in it. Wait, frozen meat is a thing? Here, let me grab another chunk. I'm gonna help you out. Sometimes guys, I'll make the randomness noise. I can ask her. Right, Mom? 
Yeah, we had two hunks of. I'm gonna. Y'all need to. How big is that one? Uh, pretty big. It's pretty chunky. Hold okay. on. Take big some of Mac this. Size. Take some of this. I think it's big Mac size. Oh no. Okay, I have a question for all you uh, Popeyes people out there. Popeyes? So, yeah. For the people who live in Louisiana, mm -hmm. have y'all tried it in different places besides Louisiana? And, and is it good in Louisiana but not good in other places? Like, I'm always wondering. I've never had it personally. She has. So he's saying that because on our summer trip this this last summer, we went to Kentucky and we tried Kentucky and we fried thought chicken. it would be fun to try Kentucky fried chicken in Kentucky, and it was so, amazing. So like, but we have one in Comanche, and it doesn't taste like Comanche. There's not one in Comanche. Duncan. 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 Uh, there's one in Duncan, and it doesn't taste that good. But then we went to Kentucky, and I guess they just have like the original like recipes. So I think that's why it's so good. Well, so when I was a kid, you would walk in and they it would be a buffet. Um, and so ours aren't that way anymore. And they were like that in Kentucky. It was so much fun. And their, like, chicken is golden brown, super tender. It's really good. Okay, Perfect. so we got five hamburger patties out of that meat with just a little bit of that didn't fall. Yeah. So then... Um, our chips are looking good. Our cast iron is getting heated up. Our bacon, like. we're gonna wash our hands and we're gonna be right back. Mm -hmm. What's well, so, up guys, we're back. Here's your spatula. This is a spatula, <laughs> not the white thing. I am scared here, you're gonna put them over here. Wait, that's, that's a candy. I don't think I can see. Oh, here. You gotta let the YouTube fam see us put them in. Now we put. You do that. Wait, where's the other stack? In the bottom drawer. Oh, yeah, I want to go last. We're flipping the patties. Uh-huh. Okay, you might want to say that again because you did it before. We're flipping the patties. Uh-huh. Oh, no sticking. Good job. Okay, let me show you. Oh, you got it? Okay, that was good, but let me show you. If you get underneath there and then just flip. Okay. Okay. Good. Good job. Get in there. Good job. Okay, set your timer for six minutes. These burgers gotta be bussing, 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 bussing. With some cheese, put a lid on it to let that melt, and then we'll come back and show you the building process. Sound good, Gaff? Yeah. Okay, as I am getting the um, buns ready, I'm going to toast them with some butter, and I wanted to show you what they look like when you cut them open. They're the perfect, perfect buns. So I'm just going to put a little bit of butter on here and put them in the pan upside down or right side up <laughs> and just get a good little um, buttered crust on there. And then um, Guy Fieri has a sauce called Donkey Sauce. The kids don't like it, but I made just a little bit of it to put on um, Jeff and I's burger and it's um, mustard, ketchup, Worcestershire, um, garlic, pepper, I think that's it. Anyway, it's a great little sauce, so I made a little bit of that for us to put on ours. 
And this is coming together. The timer just went off? Yeah. Okay, the timer's gone off for the hamburgers. I've turned the heat off and the cheese is on to melt. Well, hello there, fans. We're uh, toasted and heating up everything. Uh, we're doing pretty well, and I love you guys. Mac and oh. cheese and put it on. Okay, so we're gonna grab our mick. Like that yeah. much? Yeah. So there's our mick and cheese, guys. Do you have any pickles? Oh, yes. Okay, I was gonna put, put the bacon on. Two, it said two pieces of bacon. I'm gonna do this. Do we all have to have a burger salad? Delicious guys, can't lie. Pickles are on the way. And the fork. Nice. Pretty good guys, can't admit. I cannot deny this. That this is gonna be delicious. We have our wonder we have my wonderful mother putting my pickles on. Okay, is that it? Four two more. We gotta have four on there. You know what I'm saying? I love to say, I love to say, you know what I'm saying, by the way. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, oops. Okay, that's the one without sauce. And then I'm going to, and then you wanted to get some of the chips? Yes, very much. And then take that to the table. Oh, no. Oh, no. We dropped some chips. Okay, take that to the table. That's yours. And then I'm gonna do the one with the um, sauce. So you put the sauce on both. Put the sauce on both, and then I've got the hamburger on the bottom. I'm gonna do bacon. And then a good spoon of the mac and cheese. And then Some pickles. And salt it. Gavin, come here, bud. And then we'll do some chips on this plate. Yes, ma'am. All right. We are ready to go. What do you say to everybody? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.